Okay, so welcome everyone. Today we are very happy to invite uh, Hao Chen. Hao Chen is a third year PhD candidate at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, he is advised by Prof. Biksha Raj and collaborates with uh, Dr. Wang Jindong. Um, his current research interest in general lies in learning with weak supervision and understanding in robustness and generalization of large foundation model. So he, uh, he will share with his uh, recent work on this topic and let's welcome Hao Chen. Hao Chen, let's start. Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to share my uh, SAR work, uh, which is at the SS Bolite uh, here. And the title is Understanding and Mitigating the Pretrinian Noise on Downstream Tasks. Uh, so the work is done during my uh, internship last summer at Microsoft Research with uh, Dr. Nidon. And uh, so let's get started. Uh, so the content of this talk would be, uh, first I'll go through some background and motivation of noisy model learning. The noisy model learning is a new topic we propose in this work. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll go through some motivating examples uh, to st study the effects of the pre noise. And then I'll uh, go through our feature space analysis uh, behind the pre noise, why uh, the pre noise causes such effects on the downstream datasets. And uh, finally, we propose some mitigated methods uh, to, of the pre noise on downstream tasks with more uh, experiments and discussions of this work. So let's first go through uh, some background and motivation of this work. Uh, so uh, this work, we focus on large foundation models and uh, we all know that large foundation models usually require massive pre-training data. Uh, for example, the open clip is trained on line 2B, which is a 2 billion uh, image text file data set. And LAMA is usually trained on uh, at least 2 trillion of tokens. And uh, the adaptation of these foundation models usually follows the pre-training and tuning paradigm. So we pre-train the foundation model uh, using some proxy uh, objective on a large scale data datasets. And after that, we conduct some sort of, uh, some types of tuning on specific downstream tasks. Uh, for example, we conduct linear probing or parameter vision tuning or a full fine tune uh, in previous uh, transport learning paradigm. And uh, we usually attribute the success of this foundation model to the large scale pre training data. However, as the pre training data uh, grows larger and larger, uh, we must collect, uh, collect, from the, collect data from the web to form such large scale pre training data. And uh, this inevitably uh, introduces noise or other type of bias into pre training. This may lead to some uh, unexpected generalization or behavior of these foundation models on downstream. So uh, we term this topic as catastrophic, uh, catastrophic inheritance, where we study what's the uh, effect of the pre bias inherited in, in the foundation model on to the downstream uh, tasks. For example, in the pre data, we may have low quality uh, biases where the uh, samples are corrupted or the samples contain some noise or the samples are contaminated with the testing set. Uh, in the pretrain data, we may, we may also have the skill distribution where the distribution of the data, uh, the concepts or the cluster of the data is imbalanced. And uh, in the pretrain data, because they are collected from the web, they may also present some uh, ethical content such as privacy, bias, and toxicity. And uh, all of these biases are learned by the foundation models. And uh, they uh, can be inherited to downstream uh, tasks, which can cause some uh, unexpected impacts, for example, uh, they can uh, they can cause the change in the generalization and in training dynamics. They can also raise some privacy and security issues on the downstream tasks. And uh, we found this uh, direction uh, rather underexplored, and uh, we think it's still uh, very important and interesting to study this uh, direction. And here are some examples of catastrophic inheritance, where, uh, for example, the stable diffusion can usually produce the uh, sexual abuse material or the unethical material. And uh, uh, we also see the language models are easily to be uh, jailbreaked or adversely uh, attacked. And uh, in this work, we basically focus on the pre noise of the uh, the noise in the pre data and uh, what's the effects of this noise on the uh, 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 downstream tasks. So uh, actually, there are some evidence 
uh, earlier showing that the protein noise, the inevitable protein noise can actually cause some difference in the downstream performance of these foundation models. For example, OpenAI trains their clip on the WLT400 meeting, which is a private data set of their own. And uh, OpenClip trains the clip on uh, line 2B, which is a mo much more noisy image text pair data set compared to the WLT400 meaning. And uh, uh, they achieve very similar zero shot performance on Evinet as uh, uh, shown in this table. And uh, the protein noise also uh, have some evidence in la large language model where uh, people have reported some repeated data pattern or repeated corruption in the uh, protein data of the language models. And uh, this uh, protein noise usually due to the memorization of this noise and uh, also the uh, degraded performance of this foundation models. So uh, we term this topic uh, the topic of studying protein noise as noise model learning. And we know there's a like traditional uh, direction called noise label learning. And uh, uh, noise in noise label learning, we care about the data where the downstream task data contains some noise. And uh, we know that the noise can hurt the downstream performance. So we want to uh, use some techniques or eliminate the noise in the downstream task to improve the perform model performance. And uh, many techniques in this direction have been proposed. Uh, proposed. This topic is also, is also widely studied. And uh, compared to noise label learning, uh, noise model learning cares more about the pre-training noise. And we don't make any assumption on the downstream data, uh, downstream task data. So the downstream data can be either clean or noisy. And we care, we want to uh, answer the question uh, that does the pre-training noise affect the downstream generalization? And if they does, uh, how do they affect the downstream generalization? So this topic is uh, unexplored before, and uh, perhaps we intuitively we will intuitively believe that uh, the cleaner the protein data, the better the uh, downstream performance. And uh, uh, so there are two questions we really care uh, about in the noise model learning. The first question is how does the noise in the protein data affect the performance of these protein models on downstream tasks? And the second question is that how can we mitigate the detrimental effect if there is any? Uh, of this protein noise. And we make two additional practical uh, assumptions where the first assumption is that the protein data is possibly a black box and uh, noisy to us because of the massive size, size of them. And usually they contain some expired, expired URLs which we cannot assess anymore. And we also assume that the protein models are also, also partially or fully black box to us because some of the foundation models are private, such as uh, ChatGPT, and uh, or some of the foundation models are too expensive to uh, for fine tune on downstream tasks. So here is a illustration compare the noise label learning and noise model learning. On the uh, left, I'm showing the noise label learning, and on the right, I'm showing the noise model learning. So in noise lab label learning, we only have one stage. We are given a noisy uh, downstream data set. We want to train our model from scratch or adapt our pre-trained model, which is uh, tunable and accessible uh, on a downstream data set to improve the performance on downstream uh, tasks. And for noise model learning, we have an uh, inaccessible noisy pre-training data where we pre-train the model on such noisy data. And after pre-training, we have uh, only partial access or no access to the pre-trained model. And we want to see uh, what's the effects of the pre-training noise on the downstream data. And if it has some uh, bad effects on the downstream, how can we mitigate such bad effects on the downstream which without uh, full access to the pre-trained model? Uh, so after knowing that, uh, we conduct a set of empirical study to understanding the effects of the pre-training noise on downstream tasks. So uh, for the pre-training, we adopt two pre-training paradigms or two pre-training data sets. The first one is YFC50 mini and uh, CC12 mini, which is a uh, image test pair data sets. And we uh, conduct clip pre-training on these two data sets. And second is image 1K, where we conduct the fully supervised learning on this data set. And we uh, introduce synthetic noise into these data sets. Uh, for YFC50 mini, we randomly swap the image text pairs to uh, introduce noise. And for uh, image 1K, we directly uh, swap the label between two samples. So the noise here is totally random. <clears throat> and we pre-train two models on, uh, uh, on different scales of this data sets, uh, RESNA-50 and VITB-16. Uh, so for CLIP, we pre-train the VITB on uh, YFCC-15 mini plus CC-12 mini. And we pre-train uh, uh, RESNA-50 on only YFCC-50 mini. And for EMINI-1K, we pre-train both models on 
uh, the training set of the Miller 1K. And we train the models according to different noise ratios from zero to 30. And uh, the pre-training adopts heavy regularizations as we normally did in the pre-training. And uh, to evaluate the uh, downstream performance, we first conduct an evaluation of downstream classification tasks. And for classification tasks, we adopt two protocols. The first protocol is in-domain evaluation, where we select 14 vision, uh, downstream vision data sets, and this covers a wide range of domains. And in, in domain, we mean that the training set and testing set are of the same marginal distribution of X. And uh, the auto domain evaluation, we conduct it on uh, domain net and net variance, which mean uh, auto domain here means the training set and the testing set are of different distribution. And for this evaluation, we report the average performance over all data sets evaluated. And we uh, also adopt various tuning methods on the downstream, including linear probing, uh, LoRa of VIT and also the full fine tuning. So uh, let's first lo look into the linear probing uh, results on the in domain evaluation. Uh, so, on the in domain evaluation of linear probing, we first found a, a very uh, counterintuitive observation where we found that slight protein noise up to 5 or 10% can actually benefit the in domain classification tasks, which is uh, 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 actually quite surprising to us at the beginning. Uh, for example, as shown in this figure here, uh, we are plotting the accuracy uh, as the y-axis and the uh, x-axis showing the percentage of samples we are using on the downstream. And uh, we are showing different lines uh, of different colors for the different noise ratio. The blue one is the clean per-chain model and the orange one is 5% per-chain, 5% uh, noise per-chain model. We find that uh, for both ResNet 50 and the VIT and also for both for the supervised pre-training and clip pre-training. The 5% and 10% noise uh, pre-training model usually performs better than the clean pre-training model. And as we further increase the noise in pre-training to uh, like 10, 20 or 30%, uh, the noise starts first the downstream performance. Uh, and on auto domain linear problem evaluation, we found some uh, different observation where as long as the noise introduced into the pre-training data, the auto domain performance of these pre-training models starts uh, always uh, consistently decreases, which is uh, 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 in contrast to our in-domain observation. And here we can uh, see that for both ResNet 50 and uh, VIT and for different uh, pre-training data paradigms, the clean pre-training model always performs the best on the auto domain uh, tasks. And uh, uh, once the noise is introduced, the uh, performance start, uh, the model performance on the auto domain task starts uh, decreases. And uh, we wonder uh, whether this uh, observations on the in domain and auto domain holds with different tuning methods. So we compare with full and and uh, plus LoRa for the uh, VIT uh, backbones. And uh, uh, the results for the in domain evaluation are shown here. So basically, we found that. For different tuning methods, the same uh, same observation still holds, where uh, no matter uh, using linear probing or using LoRa or the using uh, full fine tuning, we can also find that uh, up to five or 10% per tune noise, they can benefit the in-domain performance. We can also find that the difference between the uh, clean and noisy model uh, and the noisy per tune models become smaller as the uh, tuning method modifies more per tune parameters. <laughs> And for uh, auto domain evaluation, we found the previous observation also holds uh, with different tuning methods, where the clean pre-training model always performs the best. And once uh, the noise is introduced as a pre-training, uh, the auto domain uh, performance starts decreases, no matter what tuning method is used here. And the difference between the clean and noise model also becomes smaller as more parameters of the pre-training, uh, as more of the pre-training parameters has been uh, modified as the downstream tasks. Uh, and uh, uh, except for classification tasks, we also validate the observation on the detection and segmentation tasks. So we adopt the Immunet 1K per train, noisy per train to rest 950 on COCO uh, detection and uh, segmentation. Uh, we found that for detection and segmentation tasks, that per train noise can also benefit uh, uh, the downstream performance uh, as shown in this two table here. We adopt different uh, methods for detection, like faster RCA and retina net, and uh, uh, different methods for uh, segmentation, uh, which is mask RCA and uh, solo V2, where we found basically the five 
percent per chain noise, uh, noise per chain model performs better than the clean per chain model. And the 10% noise per chain model achieve comparable performance to the clean per chain model <clears throat> or the 5% uh, noise per chain model. Uh, so after uh, showing the observations, we wonder uh, what's the uh, like change or what's the difference in the feature space, uh, the per chain feature space that causes this uh, lead to this observation or the difference on the downstream tasks. So we conduct some feature space analysis. So uh, given the per chain model, we conduct the singular value decomposition on the features of this per chain model uh, for different downstream tasks. And based on the singular values, we define two metrics here. The first metric is singular value entropy. Basically, it measures the flatness of the singular value distribution of the per chain features on this downstream task. And second metric is largest singular value. Basically, it measures the ratio of the largest singular value uh, over all the uh, summation of all the singular values. And we take a negative logarithm here for uh, uh, making the difference more obvious. <clears throat> and uh, we uh, correlate the singular value entropy with the in-domain performance. So uh, as this two figure shows here, I plot the singular uh, value entropy as the x axis and the in-domain accuracy is as y axis and for ResNet 50, uh, you may not have 1k per trend and uh, web 50, 50 million clip per trend. So basically, uh, we found that some uh, uh, some similar patterns across different data sets, uh, like different uh, scatters here uh, for the uh, strong correlation between the uh, singular value entropy and the indoor accuracy. So the singular value entropy and the indoor accuracy, they usually first increases and then decreases as the noise ratio increases. And this basically indicates that the slight per noise can encourage the model to use more capacity to face the noise structure. And uh, more capacity, uh, slightly more capacity are used to face the noise structure, meaning a higher dimension of the feature space, which lead to a better initialized feature as the downstream tasks. Uh, but as the noise further increases, uh, more dimensions are used to fit in the noise. So less useful features are learned as a downstream, leading to corresponding to the worst performance of 20 and 30 noise per chain models. And for out domain tasks, we find the largest singular value ratio directly correlates with uh, out of domain accuracy. So uh, as uh, noise ratio increases in per chain, the, uh, uh, the largest singular value consistently decreases and the uh, out domain uh, and LSVR consistently equals because it's a, a negative uh, logarithm. And the autonomous performance also consistently decreases. So uh, this can be also correlated with the SV, uh, where uh, as noise in uh, increases in the pre more capacity of the feature space in the pre model is used to fit in the noise and less transferable or dominant singular uh, vectors are learned during the pre due to worse uh, autonomous performance. Uh, so after uh, knowing the difference in the feature space, we want to propose some uh, mitigation methods that can mitigate the effects of this per chain noise on downstream data sets without the, uh, retraining the foundation models from scratch. So we propose a black box Fantinio method where we introduce a MLP projection head in the linear classification layer on top of the uh, uh, backbone of the foundation uh, per chain models. And the MLP is basically used to uh, transform the pre-trained features from the uh, F to Z, uh, there is a new feature space and F is a pre-trained feature space. And we define three uh, regularization terms during the black box fine tuning. The first term, we encourage the consistency between the pre-trained features and the MLP transformed features. And second uh, term, basically minimizing the covariance matrix of the new uh, transformed MLP features. So it's encourage uh, different dimension in the uh, transform feature encode different information to be uh, make the uh, singular value of the new feature space to be more scattered and more flatness, uh, and that's present more flatness. In the last term, we directly maximize the largest singular value ratio of the MLP transform features. Uh, and uh, we term all methods as the M2, and uh, we can see that uh, once applying M2 to in-domain tasks, uh, we can get the uh, performance increases. And also notably, uh, we compare with linear probing and the uh, MLP, basically MLP meaning uh, RMS without the regularization terms we proposed. <clears throat> and uh, for the in-domain task, we can find that although MLP, uh, adding MLP, basically adding more extra parameters, they can already improve the performance, but it did, did not rectify the uh, 
effects of the per tune noise, meaning the five percent noise of MLP tuning and LP uh, linear probing uh, are, are still better than the uh, clean per tune models. <clears throat> And once introduced the regularization terms, we found that the clean pre model now performs the best compared to the noisy pre models. And the performance uh, degrades as a uh, degrees as the noise uh, ratio uh, increases. And we also found the uh, OMS provides a better uh, singular value entropy as the in-domain tasks. And uh, for outdoor domain tasks, we found the similar thing. So basically, uh, MLP can improve the performance already, but all methods can further improve the performance and also pro uh, presents smaller gaps between different uh, uh, noisy pre-tuned models. <clears throat> and the larger singular value uh, ratio, uh, the relative value of large singular value ratio also gets improved on the odd domain tasks. And uh, we also validate the MTO for uh, LoRa of uh, LoRa tuning of VIT, where basically we find the similar thing. Uh, MTO can also be applied with LoRa to mitigate the pre-tuning noise, rectify the uh, effects of pre-tuning uh, by making the uh, clean pre-tuning model perform the best as a downstream and uh, uh, and better than the five percent or ten percent pre-tuning noise, where LoRa its own cannot rectify this uh, effects or this behavior. So uh, after validating the M2 um, or motivating uh, models, we also validate on more practical large models. So for visual model, we select some some supervised per trained model because uh, some supervised is, they generally use pseudo labels, which can which can be viewed as noise. And uh, we also uh, select the Umina twenty one K per trained model, <clears throat> which is much noisier than uh, Umina one K. We also select two uh, line two B clip per trained model. And we validate these visual models on 14 in-domain datasets and the uh, dominant out-domain datasets. And we also uh, validate the idea on language models where we select some a set of uh, language models. And we also select uh, embedding API from OpenAI, text data 02, uh, as the black box model to validate our uh, assumption that the prediction model can be uh, treated treat, treat as a black box. And we validate the in-domain uh, uh, evaluation on GLUE benchmark and the auto domain evaluation on the GLUE X benchmark of these uh, language models. Uh, and from the results here, we can also see that uh, by adding OR method to the uh, noisy per models, we can largely improve both the in-domain and the auto domain performance for both vision and uh, language tasks. <clears throat> and even for the black box API uh, of, from opening it here. Uh, so uh, in previous experiments, uh, we mainly involve the random pertunian noise. Basically means the noise can exist in all classes and the all concepts uniformly. And we additionally conduct some uh, extra discussion on asymmetric pertunian noise, where we study the asymmetric noise in Emina 1K. And we first find uh, the overlap classes in Emina 1K with CIFAR 100 using the word not syn synonyms. And we introduce noise only within those uh, overlap classes. And uh, for downstream linear probing evaluation, we select the noise related in domain tasks, uh, which is CVR 10 and CVR uh, 100, which directly overlap with the uh, noise related classes. And the noise and related in domain tasks, like uh, for the 101 and the uh, Kartag and the uh, Euro set. And for all domain tasks, we also validate on the, uh, we still validate on the domain net. Uh, we found that for the asymmetric uh, pertunian noise, uh, similar observation still holds even for the noise related uh, uh, downstream tasks. So basically, uh, uh, as shown in this lab figure here, we split the in domain accuracy to uh, noise unrelated and noise related. And for both noise unrelated and noise related, we found that linear, in linear probing, 5% uh, noise always outperforms the clean pre model, even though uh, the classes in the downstream are overlap with the pre class, pre noise classes. And after adding our methods, we can rectify this uh, pre effects on the downstream and improve the performance in general. And uh, for other domain performance, we found the similar uh, observation as before, which is not uh, quite surprising and follows our expectation. Uh, or methods can also be uh, combined with noise label learning. So basically both the pre-training and downstream data contains noise. And we validate this uh, on noisy CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100. And uh, we are showing this plus 
uh, uh, the downstream noise ratio for the x axis of this plus and the downstream accuracy for the y axis of this plus. The top row is showing the evaluation of the linear popping on noisy downstream tasks. So basically, we found that no matter adapting uh, imminent pre-trained or clear pre-trained model on CIFAR 10 or CIFAR 100, we still found the similar thing where 5% and 10% noise benefits the downstream tasks, even though the downstream task and pre training task contain some noise. And once adding our proposed method, we rectify the pre training effects by making the original uh, method as the best uh, compared to the noise pre training method. And also it improves the general performance. Which meaning uh, the proposed noise model learning uh, method uh, direction in this work is actually complementary to the uh, noise labor learning, uh, the traditional direction. And uh, we also uh, want to highlight some related works on also the pertinent noise and pertinent data, which is actually quite important uh, these days. So the first one is the noisy tool. So basically, they found that after pertaining the uh, model on a uh, uh, after pre-training the model, when adapted on uh, a downstream task, we can add some random noise to the uh, pre-trained width of this language model. And it usually gives better performance. And uh, the NEF2 follows the similar idea, which uh, found that after pre-training the large uh, uh, language models, we can introduce some noise into the word embeddings of these language models. And it usually gives better performance on the downstream. And uh, another related work is our recent uh, proposal for the uh, catastrophic in inheritance. So basically, we want to <clears throat> study uh, all kinds of pertinent data biases uh, uh, other than noise and uh, different types of foundation models and uh, to study their effects on the downstream. And uh, there's another related work called Pertinent Scale to uh, LM Pertinent Data. So basically, they study different uh, low quality and toxicity samples in the pertinent data and their effects on the downstream. And uh, yeah, as a conclusion to this work, so basically in this work, we propose a new research direction called noisy model learning. Uh, it's targeted for studying and mitigating the pertinent noise on the downstream without the full access to the uh, foundation model or the pertinent models. And uh, some key observation we found, we found that uh, slight noise in the pertinent can usually benefit the in-domain tasks. And these observations are agnostic to model architecture, to uh, pertinent policy objective, and uh, also agnostic to pertinent noise type, uh, downstream tuning method, and downstream applications. So uh, these observations are actually uh, quite universal. And uh, we also found that the pertinent noise always hurts the automated tasks. And uh, we uh, propose the AM2, which can mitigate the malicious effects of the pertinent noise. Uh, in either the black box or parameter efficient ways. And uh, our future work would include other pre-training paradigms like diffusion and the uh, language model and other types of the pre-training bias, basically corresponding to or uh, proposal for the catastrophic inheritance. And uh, that's, that's, that's it. Thanks. Thanks for listening.